Welcome to r slash Tales from Tech Support, where we get to have a little chuckle at the technologically disadvantaged, like me. I'm Uncle Reddit, and have I got a story for you. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Today we're going to continue with... Hello? <laughs> Today we're going to continue with uh, Tales from Tech Support Best of 2011. There's quite a few on the list of, for each year, but I think it's kind of interesting to look back and see what issues were the same and what were different and... Uh, you know, hear about some of the stuff that's either not around anymore, uh, and then you think about what we have now, and it's it's hard to kind of piece it all together sometimes, but eh, let's read some stories. So this just happened. My mother got a new notebook for Christmas, and while I was a little drunk last night, I decided to help her set it up. First thing I noticed was there was a CD with all the drivers on it, but the notebook had no CD drive. I crossed my fingers and hoped for the best. Everything seemed to be installed except the wireless adapter drivers. So I connected via Ethernet and tried the drivers. Didn't work. Tried another set. That didn't work. Checked and double checked the adapter to make sure it was the right drivers, but Intel ProSet Wireless was still saying the adapter wasn't supported. I spent two hours trying to fix this for her with no luck. This morning when I woke up more clear-headed, I decided to have another go at it. I messed with it for another two to three hours with no results. I was talking to a friend through AIM at the same time and he had a suggestion for me to try. Switching on the wireless switch on the laptop. F my life. Hey, I am. There's a throwback for you. Yeah, I had that problem with my wife's laptop once where she kept saying, she kept swearing she couldn't get online. She just couldn't get online and couldn't figure out why. And I started messing around and it took me a little while. I, not quite this long, but for some reason, something told me to go look at the adapter and it was never turned on. There was a hot key on the keyboard of her laptop that you could toggle your wireless on and off. So what are you going to do? Tech support reaches new depths. Owning a computer repair shop, I've had customers bring in odd things to repair in the past, like gaming consoles and flat panel TVs. But yesterday morning brought in a customer with his fish finder off of his bass boat. He had plugged it into the 24 volt line instead of the 12 volt line. I almost told him, that's not my field and take it to Bass Pro Shop. Then remembering how much I used to enjoy fishing when I still had time for fishing, I thought, what the hell, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Put it on the bench and opened it up. Placing it under my jeweler's lamp, I looked it over and under the lens, I could see the wire on a resistor was burned through at the solder point. I soldered it back and reassembled it, handed it back to him and told him to try it out and let me know if it worked. No charge. He came back into the shop right before we closed last night and brought with him a couple three to four pound smallmouth bass as a thank you. Damn, it worked. I repaired a fish finder. I thanked him for the fish and asked him to please not tell his buddies about the repair. I hate to think what kind of things they might bring in for a repair next. I'm creating on this cat because I'm following him around with the camera. He keeps turning his back on it intentionally. We'll see how long this one lasts. Anyway, now see, that's the kind of thing I like. You know, you got your bread and butter, your, your PCs and PC equipment, peripherals, whatever, for repair. But for me, what really makes things worthwhile is doing the oddball stuff. Not all the time, like he said, you don't want everybody and their grandmother bringing you a fish finder, depth finder, whatever. But at the same time, doing the occasional weird thing like that, that one-off thing, really kind of breaks the monotony up and, I don't know, it just kind of sparks something in me. Because I'm a tinkerer at heart anyway, so, eh, maybe I'm weird. Well, I know I'm weird, but... By the way, this will make some of you guys happy. I noticed somebody a few months back complaining about my, uh, my unkempt beard, and, uh, my hair has been getting stupid long and my beard's been getting extra bushy back here and everything. So, uh, so yeah, trimmed up the neck, cleaned up the head. See, eh, I took this down a little, but I'm not going to shave it completely. Cause I think it looks worse than having the hair there, but yeah, we neaten it up some. I'll have a barber do this outer part and do a little more shape into it later, but just start right. We have viruses on our computer that keep putting bad stuff in our son's internet history. I kid you not. Them. So can you check our computer for viruses? Me. Uh, yes, but the bad stuff in your internet history, only on your son's profile is probably, 99.9%, .9 not a virus. Them. It has to be. There's no other way that could get into our computer. <laughs> Me. Have you ever considered that someone in your house is looking for it? Them. No, but we don't have to because nobody does. Me, have you asked your son? Them, we'll go ask him, but it's still a virus. We know it. They leave and come back extremely upset. Them, 
Our son says that he was on his Xbox and someone said they'll hack him and do bad things. It was a hacker. Me. Okay, I'm going to be straight with you. Your son's been looking up hardcore stuff. Them. Get out of our house. Our son is not a disgusting pig. Me. Maybe he's not, but you aren't too smart. Them. Get out. Get out. Me. Lol. Yeah, nobody ever thinks it's their kid. Oh no, my kid wouldn't look that stuff up. No, no. My kid wouldn't speed in the car that he borrowed for the night. No, no. My kid wouldn't drink at that party. Yeah, it's never your kid, right? I know my kids. Some things I think they'll do. Some things I doubt they'll do. But you can't put anything past them, your kids. We all did weird, dumb, crazy stuff when we were growing up. Some more than others. I just had a good one. I can't get on the internet. I'm one of the on-site support techs at a city hospital. We have some interesting users, but one just took me by surprise. I get a call from a nursing unit on our fourth floor. She was calling the help desk, but it was busy and bounced to my line. One of her other techs had done some work on her PC earlier that day. User. Hey, I was hoping you could help me. Ever since blank left, the internet hasn't been working. Me. Are you having trouble accessing just one site, etc.? User. I can't access anything online at all. My offline applications are working fine now, though. I was able to ping the user's PC and everything looked like it was reporting fine. I told her I was going to try to connect to her PC and I got the thing up and logged me in without issue. Me. Okay, why don't you show me the problem? User opens up her email fine through OWA. Her MedTech client connects fine, Telnet to a server off-site, and proceeds to tell me that this is the offline stuff that's working. I pause a moment and sigh to myself, seeing that everything's working fine. So what is the problem again? She opens up a new instance of IE, it loads her homepage fine, and she hovers to an area to the left of the address bar. Over the phone I can hear her clicking like crazy. This is the internet button, and now it won't do anything. Now she's trying to click the icon for the page. Normally this brings up her history when double clicked in IE7. User. Usually this is where I choose which internet to go to. I don't even see Google here now. That's like the main internet these days, right? Her history had been cleared when the other tech ran a cleanup utility. I informed her how to use the address bar. I also kind of broke policy and made Google her homepage. Remember, these are the same people that take care of you when you're deathly ill. FSM help us all. I pretty much have never used Internet Explorer except for like the first year I had a computer. So, uh, not sure I know what they're talking about, but it doesn't sound right. Evil Apple. Not in tech support and barely computer literate, but here goes. My mother, 50s, has a friend who's been complaining for years about how Apple sold her a computer without a keyboard. She was going to sue Apple for selling her something she didn't want. She needed a laptop and they sold her some garbage that didn't even work right. Apple was a bad company that profits from scamming the older generation, etc. We all thought it was an iPad, so we told her to bring it over so that we could check it out and teach her how to use it. Since she barely uses a computer anyway, we thought an iPad might work well enough for her needs. She brings it over. It was a MacBook that she couldn't figure out how to open. So she couldn't even see his screen. I don't know what she thought it was. Just a little... I don't know. I guess she had no idea what a laptop was at the time. Yep. Decided to run away from the camera again. I love my aunt. A while ago, my aunt lost a lot of important data when her hard drive tanked. She bought a new computer, but the hard drive on the new computer was beginning to eat it after a few years. She called me and told me her situation. I started to prepare for the tough conversation of... If it's bricked, blah, blah, blah. No, I'm not a data retrieval expert. I'm so sorry. Then she told me she had a backup. I kid you not, I jumped and cheered when I heard that. Strutted into her house, replaced the hard drive, including upgrading her to Windows 7, and strutted out. Problem solved and super proud of my aunt. Yeah, it's pretty rare even these days for somebody to have a backup of their stuff. Uh, so many people think they have things backed up and they really don't. I had one person who thought they had everything backed up asked me to help them replace their hard drive, and it turns out they just had a basic image of the operating system and all the drivers they needed. No actual like files and data and things like that. Just, uh, yeah, it was sad. Faith in humanity restored. It all started with a user coming to me saying they did some file cleanup on their computer one to two weeks ago. They realized they deleted files they still needed and asked if there was any way we could restore them. I say sure and start perusing our backups. One week back, nothing. Two weeks back, nothing. Three weeks back, nothing. One month back, you guessed it, nothing. Three months back, still nothing. 
so I called the user and tried letting them down easy. But wait, apparently they were in a folder that was linked to from a shortcut in another folder that was a folder in another folder. There was hope as this was a different spot from where she originally told me I could find the files. Also, a simple search wouldn't have yielded what I needed without knowing exact location, as it was a standard form that about 50 of our employees used for clients, and naming conventions were all over the place. So I go back in and start searching again, this time for the mysterious shortcut folder. Lo and behold, a month back in backups and I find it. A shortcut to a folder, to a folder, to a folder of a user who hasn't worked here in eight months. And there were the files, so I copy them all to her desktop so she can double check that they are the correct files, and then move them to where she would normally store them. Many thanks were said and ticket closed. Until she snuck into my office yesterday and, quick as a ninja, dropped an envelope on my desk and left without saying a word. I finished what I was doing and opened the envelope to reveal this gem. Oh, well, that's cool. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And inside it says, you're terrific. Thank you so much for helping me out with my deleted folders. I know it took a long time and I really appreciate it. Thank you. In all my years working IT, I've never had a user go beyond the usual, uh-huh, thanks, at the end of a phone call or on-site visit. Not only did she thank me then, she went out of her way to grab a card to thank me again. It's now hanging up next to my desk as a beacon of hope for my sanity and their safety. Yeah, that's pretty nice when people actually go out of their way to thank you. It's not that they have to. It's not that we deserve anything more honestly than our hourly pay or salary or whatever. But uh, it really is nice to be appreciated. Just helps smooth over the rough edges and just enough so that you don't want to either injure somebody or quit or whatever. So apparently PC doesn't equal personal computer anymore. So I just got this tech support ticket. I work at a company providing remote access to computers, and this is from an angry Mac user. Direct copy and paste, including typos. Hello, I wish you would remember that Mac users do not like the generic term PC when referring to computers. You do this on page, connect to this PC. Please respect the far greater superiority of the Mac and give it its due recognition, not lumping it together with a piece of junk. <laughs> Oh my god, and down below from Mike Ash we have, as a dedicated Mac user for two decades, let me just say, that guy should go get bent. Yeah, really. I mean, get over yourself, seriously. Now, I'm a Windows guy, it's just the way my brain works. Windows and Android, that's kind of how my gears turn. Some people are really good at Apple and Mac and all that stuff, you know, iPhones, iPads. It's, it's a different animal, but as far as Windows machines and Macs go, they each have their pluses and minuses, and for some stuff like what I do, the extra expense of a Mac is not going to get me any further than a Windows machine. All you're paying for at that point is the name Mac and really nothing else. Now, there are some specialized things. Now, there are some specialized things where I could see a Mac coming in handy, but as far as corporate stuff, you know, honestly, Windows 9 times out of 10 is going to work just fine and probably be more cost effective in the long run. But to just be all snotty like that, yeah, get over it. Seven years in IT, best mistake ever. I work in IT, have done so for around seven years, had many hilarious, frustrating, and ridiculous things happen, but this is my favorite. A client of mine was setting up a new business and was trying to keep a lot of information about this new startup private. He composes an email with certain information about this new company and sends it over to us, stressing that he wants to send this out to over 50 recipients and wants to ensure that each recipient can't see the other recipient's email addresses, as this would cause many problems for him. In his email to us, he states, How do I make sure that each recipient can't see each other? It would be a major crap storm if they saw each other's email addresses, as I could possibly be cut out of several very important business deals. Wait for it. I've included the list of every recipient's email address in the CC bar at the top of this email. <laughs> Please respond and advise. Oh my God. <laughs> After forwarding to the other techs in the company and losing about half an hour through laughing so hard my face almost exploded, I politely explained to him that he had just forwarded that email to every single person on the list and they can all see each other's email addresses. Oh, and in the future to use the BCC field. And down below we have from absolute disgrace. I worked a small to mid-sized computer retailer and we had a very interesting return. The customer called up saying that they had purchased Norton's antivirus and when they put the disc into their drive, they heard Mexican music playing. Naturally, we just assumed this was another dumb customer, but like any retailer, we told them to bring it back and let us inspect the disc. 
Lo and behold, the customer returned to the store and placed the disc into the drive. Surprisingly, when it auto-played, it indeed played Mexican music. <laughs> what had happened is there must have been an error in the stamping at the factory, and this disc, plus one other that we hadn't sold yet, had this fault. Hilarious. I'm not exactly sure where the Mexican music disc story ties into that, but, you know, both customers were a little dense, I guess. Well, hey guys, I hope you like these stories from way back in 2011. Uh, yeah, sorry the cat's gone. He decided he was going to go somewhere else. But anyway, if you get a chance, click like, subscribe to the channel if you feel like it. And uh, yeah, click this video right here for some more stories. See ya.